Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, and today we are going to be featuring a puzzle that foreshadows the Patreon monthly reward that's coming out tomorrow at 4pm our time. We'll be dropping the Fossil Hunt pack by Philip Bloomer, who is also known on the channel as Glum Hippo, um, has been with us since almost the start, and we're very grateful to Philip for sending us this pack. And more than that, Philip is... Um, also has bought a prize and is offering to post it to the winner. This is the prize, Plushy the Hippo. No, Hippo the Plushy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you can name it yourself if you win it, in fact. And uh, thank you so much to Philip for sourcing that from Yarn Works by Ella, who seems to be a 16-year-old crochet expert. Um, and thank you very much, to Philip for offering to send it to the winner. That's brilliant. Um, so that's on Patreon. Do feel free to join us on Patreon, especially with a new month starting. Um, it's $2 to get the content like that. It, $2 a month. It's $3 if you want to um, get the solution videos after the, the timing is over on those puzzles. And... Um, we do put up a list, of course, of $20 a month Patreons uh, or more, which, thank you so much for your generosity. It's literally mind-blowing. Anyway, that is Patreon. Of course, you can also um, wire into our apps, which are all on the links under the video, along with the catalogue for the website and the Discord server and a link to our merchandise as well. Uh, well done to the people who found their way to that. Uh, YouTube is not always being very helpful with the merchandise listings for us, but there are links, as I say. Anyway, those are all there. Now, I am going to be using Philip's version of this puzzle uh, in the software, which is via a tiny URL link, um, as all the ones in his puzzle pack are. Now, that's not just because I'm being lazy. It is because... Actually, we can't really render diamonds properly when we're inputting puzzles into our software. Uh, and diamonds are essential to XY differences, as you will see when we do the rules. Now, streaming. We are streaming now. I, when this video first comes out at 11pm on Tuesday evening, UK time, we will be an hour into a stream of Taiji. And I say we with some uncertainty, because for the first day in months and months, my... Wi-Fi has been on the blink completely all morning. Um, for two hours it wasn't working, then it came back for a bit, then it was gone again, and then it's been sporadic since then. That's not going to affect me recording this video, and hopefully I'll get a window to upload that later today. Otherwise, you'll be seeing these words much later in the future. But it could, of course, if it's still going on this evening, affect my presence on the stream, which would be incredibly annoying. But... Um, I'm not going to go to an internet cafe to try and record that, I'm afraid. So we are relying on my home Wi-Fi. Um, oh, yeah, that, there we go. So that's what's going on on the channel. So do do feel free to come back to this video if you've uh, gone over... Well, you've probably already gone over to the stream and you're back now. And that's great. Uh, you still remain amongst my favourite people if you watch this video um, at all or when it comes out. And... Let's have a look at the rules then. So the rules for this puzzle are that normal Sudoku rules apply. That means we have to put one to nine in every row, column, and three by three box. And in all of those areas I've just highlighted, Philip has provided the seven already. Generous. Um, blue lines are region sum lines. In each box visited by such a line, each three by three box that is, the digits must sum to the same total, which is to be determined. The target sum will potentially be different for each line. So if these three cells added up to 7, say, then those two would add up to 7. I think here, if those three added up to, I don't know, 15, those three would add up to 15. Um, yeah, the puzzle's called Borobudur, which I think is a thousand-year-old temple in Indonesia somewhere. Um, and it's possible that it looks like this from the air. I th All I remember is it's sort of huge and pyramidal, so I don't quite know. Um, what I was thinking about here is why Philip's done these as triangles rather than just lines. And it may be to do with the shape of Borobudur, which 
I don't know. I mean, I think it's a temple. Now I look at it a bit harder. It looks a bit like a Tolkien word. Um, anyway, I haven't finished the rules. We get to the exciting bit of the rules because this, these apply to the puzzles in the pack. Um, that's coming out tomorrow. XY difference pairs rules. If two cells are separated by a diamond, the digits must exhibit a difference equal to the leftmost or topmost digit sharing a row or column with them. For example, the difference between row 9, columns 3 and 4, and that's down here, is equal the difference between these two cells, so let's put in 6 and 4, the difference between those would be equal to the number here, which would therefore be a 2. So this is kind of an index at the beginning of the row or column for the differences marked by diamonds in that column. And now, in this puzzle, not all possible diamonds are necessarily given. My one tip to you is be very careful, because in some of the puzzles in the pack, um, there is a negative constraint, and all possible diamonds are given. And it makes a huge difference to solving, if you know that or if you don't. So, in this puzzle, not all possible diamonds are necessarily given. Okay, so do give it a try on the first link under the video. I am going to start now. Let's get cracking. Well, we can get cracking because 7 is a very generous digit to give us. There are only two possible pairs of Sudoku digits that have a difference of 7 because there are only two Sudoku digits that are bigger than 7. So 9 would go with 2 and 8 would go with 1. And in both row 1 and column 1, we have two diamonds. So we can immediately pencil mark 1, 2, 8 and 9 on those diamonds because in each case, they're either a 9-2 pair or an 8-1 pair. That gives us a, a quadruple in box 1 and the other cells there are 3, 4, 5 and 6, which I suspect we won't be able to use for a while, but it's true. Now, these positions are all in... They're all in these indexing positions for the differences in their rows and columns. None of, none of them which have a diamond in their column, like this, which has a diamond there, or, or in their row, or this one, or the, oh, none of them can be 9, because the difference, a difference of 9 would require a Sudoku digit of 10. So none of these three can be 9, and therefore the 9 in column 1 is here. And that must go with a 2 to make these differences. Then we've got a 1-8 pair down here. And that's interesting, because one of the differences here is 8. So one of those pairs is a 9-1 pair. I don't immediately know which. It could be here. So let's look at the top. Now that's not a 2-9 pair. This is now a 1-8 pair because they're in the box. This is a 2-9 pair. This one can't be 9 because there are diamonds in its column. So that one is a 9. Um, and this is a 2. And the, the differences here are definitely... 2, as is the difference here. Oh, well, that's quite interesting. That means this pair adds up to an even number. If the difference is 2, the parity of the two digits, whether they're odd or even, must be the same. And if the two digits have the same parity, they must add up to an even number. And that... Oh, no, I was going to say that means these two add up to an even number because of the equal sum rule but I'd not noticed this cell. Ah, I thought it was going to be a parity play of, of a sort I hadn't seen before in this puzzle. Oh, look at this equal sum line. Sorry, this has got a one cell segment on the line. So that can't be more than nine. And if this was eight, this line would add up to a minimum of 11. That's nonsense. So that's the one. That's the eight. Now we know that this diamond is the one nine pair. Now we know that this equal sum line has pairs that add up to 10. And this pair has a difference of 2 and adds up to 10. And I think that's got to be 4, 6. Yes, yeah, definitely. This pair adds up to 10, but there's an awful lot of possibilities. Oh, hang on. It can't, it can't be 1 and 9 because there's no 9 on it. I've just seen that 9 looking at that pair. Uh, but it could be another 4, 6 pair. It could be 3, 7. It could be 2, 8. Don't know. This pair, 
this pair is odd because oh hang on parity is going to matter now a bit yeah look oh this is this is a very interesting this is very interesting. Oh, gosh, there's so many weird ramifications coming here. Okay, parity is going to matter, and I will, I will show you why. And it gets really quite exciting. This cell is adding, well, it's the sum of those three digits. So from that knowledge, any three digits that see each other add up to at least six. It could be six, seven, eight, or nine. But it now sees an eight or a nine. So that is six or seven. So these three cells have a one and a two on because six is made up by one plus two plus three, seven by one plus two plus four. So that's a two, and this is a three or four. And its parity will be revealed to us by as if by magic in a few moments' time. Now, the way I'm going to reveal that is by saying that whatever these digits are, they add up to an even number. We'd looked at this earlier. If that's a two, the difference between those is two. And they're either both odd or both even. And they add up to an even number. Now, these three digits add up to an even number, but, but these two add up to an odd number. How do I know that? I know that because of the one here. That's making this like a white Kropke dot, or a, it's saying there's only a difference of one. These are two consecutive integers. I don't know why I want to suddenly say that, but I do. Um, and therefore, one of them is even and one of them is odd. That's how consecutive numbers work. And together, they add up to an odd number. But the equal line segment total here is even. So if they add up to an odd number, and we need to get to an even total. This one is definitely odd. And we know 4 and 6 are even because they are even numbers. Uh, knowledge bomb from Cracking the Cryptic. And we've got an odd number there and an even number there. The difference between them must be odd. And there is the magic that reveals this number, which is giving that difference, must be odd and is in fact a 3. And then we get a 6 here because we can sum up 3 and 1 and 2. We've got 6 there. This is a pair that doesn't include 1, so it's 2 and 4. Now, have we worked... We don't know what this region sum is at all, weirdly. Oh, hang on. 3 there. If that was a 4, this would be 1, which it can't be, or 7. If it was a 6, if it was a six, this would be 3 or 9, and it can't be either of those. Oh, that's brilliant. The only 3 whole digits that we've placed that this cell sees are three of the four possibilities that that gives. So in fact it is seven here. That's a four to make the difference work there. This is a six. Oh, we're away now. These two... Yeah, we can... Oh, that's lovely as well, Philip. We can work out these two because they have a minimum. They see a one and a two. The minimum pair there is a three-four pair. And then the line total is 14, 7 plus 3 plus 4. Well, that is the maximum for these two digits, which have to be two apart and can't include a 9. So those are a 6-8 pair. This is a 3-4 pair. I'm not going to continue the odd even shading because I'm sure... Ah, I was just about to say I'm sure we're not going to use it again, but actually these must be odd because... We can't put two more even numbers in this column, and they have to have the same parity because of two again. So I've, I've almost given up on the odd even colouring, but not quite. But I think the rest of this is Sudoku. Those add up to 14. Those do. These must add up to 14. They can't have a six in. That's a five, nine pair. There's no six there. This is six or eight. Just doing some Sudoku on this box. Um... Can't do much more. Oh, this is 7 or 8. It sees a 5-9 pair and a 3-4 pair, as well as 1, 2 and 6. Now, what else have we got? Ah, this can't be a 5. So that's 4 or 6. 5 must be in one of these two cells, along with the other of 4 or 6. What else can we do? Is this line interesting? Might be. 
Let me just think about it. Not not obvious to me why one of those is a four. Well, I mean these the rest of the the rest of the numbers in row one are from three, four, five, six. We know that. Oh, there's a six pair. Ah, look, there's a four X-wing. This is a virtual X-wing. What am I talking about? Newbies are saying. What is an X-wing? Well, a classic X-wing um, finds two numbers that can only appear in two places in a column or row. And I mean, effectively, that's what we've got here. Where is four in this box? It's in one of those two places because it's three, four pair. In this box, it's in one of those two places because that's a two, four pair. And between them, they are going to use up the fours in column four and five. So the four in this box cannot be in columns four and five. And therefore, these cells don't contain a four. That's a three, five pair. We've got a four, six pair. Now, on this line, eight plus this, which is, oh, it can't be one, seven, nine, three, five, or six, eight. That is two or four. So that e the line sum is 10 or 12, if I've got that right. I think I have. So these add up to 10 or 12, and that is, that's an even total, and this is an odd number, so that's going to be odd again. Um, 10 or 12. Well, it's not going to do it with even numbers, because uh, I've just marked them as both odd. I don't know. I, I don't have much information. Oh, I do have 7 and 1 as a pair in this box now, and that's therefore 2 or 4. Now, this has become 5, 6, or 8, given everything it sees in the column. But it's part of a 10 sum, so it's not 5. It's not 6 either, because we can't put 4 there, because we've done, well, because of the 4 X-wing or 4 being in that box. So this is an 8. That's a 2. This is a naked 5 now. It sees 9, 2, 4, 8, 7, 1 in the column six and three in the row so that is a five these are from seven eight nine and this bow tie piece here is going to have a pretty high total at least 16. I haven't really been approaching it that yet this digit though sees eight six nine one four two that is three five or seven Got one six and nine to place in the central box. That's not a nine. Ah, oh, three six pair down this column. Five, seven, and eight in these cells. Now, can we use this at all? Oh, we've got six in this box, so I'm not sure whether I should never have marked those as a four five pair, but that places six in column one and four in box four and eight and seven in that box. Oh, now we've got 9-8 on the bow tie. It's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, 5 comes out of those two. 3-4 out of those. 8 and 1 are fixed at the top. That's a 1-2 pair. I'm going to be able to do this diamond, I reckon, in a moment. 3-7-9 there. Now, the difference is 4 or 5. So let's get rid of 8 here. Ah, so if it's a 4, that's 1, 5. If it's a 5, that's 2, 7. I think those are the only ways that can work. But we've got a 2 X-Wing, another of these virtual X-Wings. So we went from weird parity stuff. We're now doing weird X-Wing stuff. So the 2s in rows 8 and 9 must be used up in those pairs of cells. Therefore, the 2 in box 9 is now in one of these two. Oh, there's a four as well. <laughs> Look, it happens with fours as well. Exactly the same. The fours in rows eight and nine are used up in those two pairs. So that's actually now a two-four pair. Just seeing if we had another X-wing. We don't need it. Um, this can't be eight. That's not a helpful triple yet. Uh, that hasn't resolved this diamond. Now, how's this bow tie getting on? Three, eight, seven, four, six, nine. That is one, two, or five. So the total here is, what is it? 17, 18, 19, or 22. 
Uh, there's still a lot of ways of doing that. Okay, we'll come back to that. Don't know anything about this pair. Um, what am I missing here? A 5-7 pair there now. Ah! Oh, since we took 8 out of this cell because of the diamond, we could place 8 in box 8. Oh, look, that's going to do some damage. 6 there, 1 in the centre. This is not a 1, so the bow tie is down to 2 possible totals. This is now a 6-9 pair. 6, 2, 1, 9, 8. That's a 4. That's a 2. This is going to unwind all our X-wings at the bottom. Uh, and at the top, we've got a 1, 7, 3, 4. The whole central column seems to be done. 5, 3. Uh, 6, 9 here is done. That oh, we're, we're, I think we're finishing nearly. We've still got that bow tie to work out though, so maybe not. 1, 3, 7 there. That is 2 or 5. Um, what's going on in this row? 2. 2 is going on in this row. That's been available for a while. Right, now we know the sum here is 10. Hang on, I've just written those the wrong way around. That's okay. The sum is 10, and it doesn't include a 3. Actually, I can do those too. This must be a 1-9 pair to make that 10 work. And that is 7. Ah, 1 and 9 are both very extreme digits. So this can't be 1 anymore. It's 3 or 7. That can't be 7. We've got a 3-8-5 triple there. It's going to come down to the bow tie. I sense it. Ah, look, 5 and 2... Oh, well, just ordinary Sudoku sorts that out. This is now 3 or 7. Right, so our total on the bow tie is either 19 or 22. Now, if it was 22, that couldn't be a 3. It would be 7, 9, 6. If it was 19, there are two possibilities. This could be a 3 with a 9, 7 pair here. So then the triangle would always be 397, but there's one more possibility. Oh no, 796. Hang on, I'm getting confused now. Right, let's take those out again. 17, 19 or 22. Let's do 19 first. If that's a 7, these add up to 12 without using 7 or 4. They would be 3 and 9. Oh, there's always a 9 on this triangle. Right. Yeah, OK, I've got it. There isn't an 8 on the triangle. If you tried to avoid putting a 9 on the triangle, the most you could put on it is 7, 6, 5, which add up to 18. But this adds up to at least 19. So there is a 9 on the triangle. And here we go again with the X-wings. There's a 9 in one of those cells. There's a 9 in one of these cells. That uses up the 9s in columns 7 and 8, so that cell is an 8, not a 9. And that, does that, it doesn't get a lot done actually, I thought that was going to be huge. Right, there's a 9 in one of those cells, so that's not a 9, we get the 9 down in box 7. So we've got 1 and 8 will get placed here. Um, OK, going to have to work out these possibilities again. Right, if that's a 3, this is either 9... Well, that is 9, 7. So that's one possibility. If that is a 7, we're aiming at either 19 or 22. So that would be 9, 6 for 22. And if it was 19, that would be 9, 3. So there's always, so we've got a three, so it never has a five in. That is the point. If you put a five in those cells with a nine, 14, to get to 19 or 22, you'd need a five or an eight here, and you can't have that. Right. So the five in this row is placed. Now, I spotted that from this quadruple, but I should have spotted it from working out that you couldn't put it in those two cells. There we go, 5 there. Right, that sorts out what the total is. It is 22. That can't be a 3. That's a 7. This is now a 9-6 pair. And that's going to sort out all the remaining pairs. 
and finish us off quite handily, I think. So we get two and four, six in the corner, four there. We can place five and three and eight in this box. That six actually has sorted out six and nine. I think I saw that when I was trying it earlier. Now we use the diamond finally. That's a three, one and seven. And down here we've got one, three and eight to put in. And we finish with three in the corner, losing its religion, not losing its Buddhist religion, I hope, as it's in the Borobudur temple. Um, and there we go. That is the solution to, yeah, what is an excellently judged um, example puzzle for Philip's XY Differences hunt. I will say that some of the things we learned doing this puzzle are very useful in the hunt. Other things aren't particularly. I don't remember any significant parity conclusions. So that was very interesting in this puzzle. Maybe I've just forgotten them. I don't also remember the vast numbers of X-Wings, which we found here as well. Really nice puzzle from Philip. And uh, you can expect a lot more of the same in the pack. And the standard of difficulty, it's kind of at this level mostly. I, th I would accept the last puzzle, which is a bit harder. But there we go. You'll find, you'll find your own levels of difficulty for the pack. Do give it a try. It is absolutely brilliant. And uh, we, welcome, we would look forward to welcoming you on Patreon or just celebrating the pack's release with you if you're already a patron. Thank you very much for following us on the channel. Hope to see you again soon and bye for now.